Hello, this is Mr. Riley, and I will be lecturing on CIST 2613, Chapter 12. Let me go ahead and get over to that window. And we'll go ahead and begin. So this chapter is on Linux and penetration testing and why it's important. So Linux, basically it's an open source program, means it's available to anyone who wants to pursue it for no charge. Has a command line interface or, you know, graphical user interface. It's code available per the general public license and kernel core is component of the operating system. So here's some different Linux desktop desktops. KDE, and you guys should have learned a couple of them inside the Linux course. You should have learned CentOS and also uh, Ubuntu. So here's some common distributions, Arch Linux, which you'll use in later on with the um, CyberOps class, CentOS, Elementary, Fedora, Manjaro, Open, uh, SUS, Debian, Ubuntu. There's probably 250 that are still being supported, but there's been thousands of different ones. The ones we use inside this class will be uh, Kali Linux. Introducing Kali Linux based on the Debian distribution like of the Debian family, designs for hacking and pen text, penetration testing of target networks and systems. Now with most Linux systems, they custom build them so they'll do certain things like Kali is built to do pen testing and um, basically check your network for flaws. Used by IT and security professionals to assess security of target environments, not designed as a desktop replacement for an OS. It's a tool used for security assessments. So that's what the desktop looks like and it breaks down into like different information gathering area. And then when you click on this, you'll get all the you know, you get the sub menu of each one of these wireless attacks, reverse engineering, exploitation, sniffing. Basics of working with Linux can operate from command line or GUI. Linux directories are annotated with a slash and drives and partitions are referenced with a series of file names like dev for device, hard disk A, partition one, and then a file. It's not like Windows where it has a drive letter. Why do we need this? The awareness of the built-in directories allows administrators to monitor known, known expected files and directories. So this is why we teach you Linux. One, so you can use Kali to do your attacks. And two, you need to know the structure of a computer before you attack it so you kind of know what to look for. Um, basics of Linux, vital to understanding terminal windows and frequently used commands. Requires a knowledge of files names, directory names, and commands that are case sensitive. Linux is case sensitive, whether it's Kali, CentOS, they're all case sensitive. Commands share a common form. So the different directories, slash is the root directory, bin, all executables in the directory are accessible and usable by the systems. This is like the Windows folder, the Windows OS. Slash boot contains all the requires, required files to boot the OS. Dev, the devices, you know, CDs, and it talks how to, how it, this is where the files dictate the access between the hardware and the OS reside. These files can be thought of as device drivers and similar related files. Etsy, file store configuration information. You'll go into this a lot for the config files. Home, this is like the users. A folder this is where they put all the users in there. The library, libraries most commonly see program language files can be found. These libraries are shared code that incorporate into an application later on, later on demand. Applications in OS store their library files in this location by default. And the mount point is where you have your CD, DVD, USBs, anything like that. You have your Opt, this directory is used by the administrator of discretion. Optional is typically used for third-party software. The PROS is for processes. Root is the home directory for the root user. It is separate from the home directory. SBIN, these are system binaries. Directory contains executables that are used by the OS. And the administrator, typically not by normal users. Temporary file 
Yar is a generic directory that contains the body of useful folders, files for Linux users, such as documentation and executables. And var is the important directory for such as print, mail spoolers, and log files. So basic commands. You got the command and options and any arguments. So the name of the command is generally that consists of the lowercase and digits. Options modify the way the command works. For example, the dash A option of the ls command generates a list of hidden files as well as normal files. ls is list, but if you put a dash A after it, then it becomes shows hidden files. So here are some regular commands. ls, that should not be a cap. List is, you know, the list command. PD is present print working directory. And it shows you where you're at. So sometimes if you're in the command line, you may get lost on where you're at. Do a PWD and see where you're at. CD, change directory. MKDIR is make directory. If you need to remove a directory, you do RMDIR. Basically, if there's anything in there, you can't empty it because, say, you know, error. But you can put, like, a dash G for force in it. RM is most aggressive removal command that removes files, folders. The difference between this command and RMDIR is command. The RMDIR command is that the, this command will remove a directory that's not empty when using the command. CP is copy for copying files, you know, CP, original location, and then space, new location. And then move, this move is used to move files from one location to another and can also rename files. A live CD or DVD. So basically with the other USB stick either. So you can basically make a USB stick bootable or a CD bootable. Contains a complete and bootable OS. Does not alter the existing operating system. It provides the ability to return the system to the state it was prior to the live, prior to using the live distribution. So this is kind of nice where you can actually go in there, boot up a system with this DVD, USB drive, and then steal information, um, scan for viruses. There's lots of different you know, reasons to use this. So you boot from the live medium and use the OS. When finished, shut down the OS, eject the medium and reboot, and you are back to where you started. Some of the uses, installing Linux on a new system, testing new software, evaluate, evaluating hardware configurations. I used to use this to check hardware repairing damaged systems and providing guest systems. I've done that too. Provide portable systems. You can use like what they call Windows 7 to go or Windows to go. You can use it for cracking passwords, stealing passwords, resetting passwords, conducting pen testing. You can do multi-booting. Like say you don't want to use a Windows, you want to use a Linux box, you can boot to the USB and do that. Perform forensics investigations, provided secure unalterable OS. We did that with some surveys to the high school students. Set up in a kiosk and create a persistent desktop. Special purposes, live CD. So you can use Kali, you can do password reset, you can do a rescue disk, and also a tobacco firewall if you want. Virtual machines. Most professionals use Kali as a VM. VMs provide the ability to run on a host computer without installing Kali or boot from an alternative media. VMs allow you to load Kali, examine a running computer, pause it, and then restart it at will. Linux VMs provide a parallel flexibility and software availability. And, you know, they're quite portable, too. Okay. That finishes up Chapter 11. Thank you. I'm sorry, chapter 12.